in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and make sure that you send me a friend request at Sheshore Tenobeta on Facebook. Just do a search on that uh, particular media, Angel Snub Nub 7. And speaking of Angel Snub Nub 7, I am, not you, but I am the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik. Even raw. I would first, before we begin to indulge in this particular topic, I would first like to recognize a few persons and my audience in general. I would like to send a shout out to my brother Leo Leo One. My uh, assistant minister, Brother Andre, 69, and Brother Andre will, uh, of course, in just a few uh, moments, will be right here on the warpath with the uh, administer of the real truth in just a few moments. So. You thought I was rough. You thought I was terrible. When this brother, with all the energy that he has, get back on the saddle. Woo! Man. I can't wait. Send a shout out to my sister, Fanadia. Brother Universal Moore. My brother, Harvey Superboy, who is now only one Harvey Superboy. Lord Maul 3. My sister Brenda Kearney. Brother David Brayboy. The Wacky World of O. My brother Natra Tahuti. And I, this is just a few. I, it's so many of you uh, out there. I just cannot name. But I would like to say to you that even though this ministry has suffered the loss of over, it is now over 50 channels. No matter where I go, you can find me. I thank all of you from wherever you may be. Those of you of course, who are the descendants of slaves in America? Those of you who are called Asians or Africans or even Caucasians, whether you are gay, lesbian, tall, short, if you are a lover of truth, if you are a lover of justice, if you are a lover of being fair, if you are a lover of just treating another person as you want to be treated, then I embrace all of you who will embrace righteousness and truth because that is what is needed in this world that is going out. And that is what is causing the trouble in this world that we have disrespect and we are jealous of another person and greed and envy. The human family is destroyed by what they call the seven deadly sins. And until we can break that shackle of those things, we will continue to live in this mess that 
existed before we were born. But unlike those prior to us, perhaps if we come together, once we get over some of these unseen obstacles that really aren't obstacles, once we get over the hump, maybe we can begin to clean up this house. So once the house become clean, it can be enjoyed not by just the rich, not by just the educated, not by just those uh, that are perceived as having material, the, the gaining of material things and whatnot. Those are supposed to be in power, royalty, or whatever. This world should be enjoyed by every human being, no matter where you are, your position in this life. I want to say that I hope, and it is not my intent, to be an arrogant person. I don't, and it is not my intent to be a boastful person. But I want to tell you, in the position that the descendants of slaves born in America, the position that we are in, you need the most boastful, the strongest. You need everything that you can get your hands on, the greatest defenders that you can accumulate, to come on your side to help defend and uplift a people who have been destroyed for over 400 years. A destroyed people. A people who are mocked. A people who are scorned. No matter how high you rise, they keep you low. You are inferior. So when I say that I am the mighty, mighty angel snub snub seven, I am the most powerful voice on YouTube. It is not just for myself. It is for all of those who are the descendants of slaves in America. You don't know who you are. You don't know your power because you allow others to hinder your potential. You allow others to keep you in a box but see real truth has come on the scene and I'm sorry but truth hurts we live in a world of deceit lies trickery falsehoods what might be true today we will find that it might be a lie tomorrow or a half truth. So we will always be hurt. Our feelings will always be hurt. You think that my feelings don't get hurt? But you must stand on that truth. It says in that religious Bible, in the scriptures, it says, you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But when you look around from the church, if you look around from the mosque, look around from the dope house, look around from Harvard University in Princeton, wherever you lay your head, wherever you look around, tell me, are you free? If you're black, I know you can't tell me that you're free. Even if you're Caucasian or Asian, you are oppressed by somebody or something. You're not free. And you're not free because you have yet to have the truth. And if you have not accepted your reality, then you don't have the truth. So not only must a person bring you what is true, but they must bring you or bring that truth in its reality. And the reason why you suffer is because even though you understand what truth might be, you won't accept your reality. You love fabrication. You love falsehood. You like fictional fairy tales. And I hurt your feelings 
because I require you to think and you don't like your thinking pattern to be challenged because you are in a box. You see things through rose colored glasses and you don't want to see no other way except through the glasses when you need to take them off. A person that can see don't need glasses at all. But it is good to have some shades when you are in light. And that's what this ministry represents, brothers and sisters, associates and friends and even enemies. That's what this ministry represents, light, great light. And when you have light, it brings life. And it raises that which that seemed dead, it raises it up and makes it to grow and mature and reproduce and bring to us upon the planet life. Truth hurts. And I don't want to be arrogant. But I have to stand strong because your enemies are tough. They are smart. They're slick. They're strong. And they are murderers. They are killers. This is a proven fact. You can't be nice to them because they take your kindness as weakness. And that's why you continue to be in the position that you're in because you're too dang nice. You can't be nice to wicked folks because the only thing on their mind is how they are going to eat you they only view you as prey as a tool somebody to be used you might not like this society you might not like this world but there are many people who love this world they thrive off this world they don't want it to go anywhere. You have to understand that everybody don't want right. So I understand why 50 of my channels are destroyed. Because they fear the word. I'm not, I'm not showing pornography. I'm not telling people to go out and buy guns. I'm not talking about a race war. The only thing I'm bringing to us is just telling the truth. When you tell the truth, make people see their reality. That's what they fear. Because when people finally take a grasp of their reality and they see that it is not as beautiful as they believe it is, then they will change it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, with 50% dissatisfaction, will bring 50% change. So you don't see real change because so many of us have been content in our oppression and we are satisfied. But when we all become dissatisfied and really get sick of this foolishness and when there is 100% dissatisfaction from all the human family, then this will change once and for all. But again, like I told you, there are those who benefit from things just the way they are. They don't want no change. And many of you have become content. Oh well, if you can't beat them, join them. And that's what many of you have done. You have decided to join the wicked, join the evil, but at the same time, your scriptures, you are religious believers and your God is telling you that this world is on its way out and I'm bringing in a new world. I'm not going to, God is not going to embrace those who maintain this world. The God that you talk about plans to make a new heaven, a new earth and the former things shall pass away. This is of the former things. Black is of the former things. White is of the former things. The United States of America is of the former thing. Everything that you see now is of the former things. 
but you have become like Lot's wife. When in the scriptures, God told Lot and his family to leave Sodom and Gomorrah, don't look back. But Lot's wife, because there was some type of love for the filth, those things that God hate, don't look back at it. But something about that filth, even though God hated it, Lot's wife, there was some type of love. And some of y'all love evil. You want good and evil, and you can't have both. It's either one or the other. That's the reality of it. But see, you have these false teachings where they tried, you tried to embrace both. A little bit of good and a little bit of evil. You know, whatever. That's not how things work. Either you're righteous or you are unrighteous. One or the other. There is no gray area. There is no, no uh, compromise. It's one or the other. You don't compromise with evil. You don't compromise with unrighteousness. If you are a believer in God, you show me anywhere in Bible or Quran where God compromised with the devil, with Satan, with evil. God is the greatest killer. He don't play. And so since I represent reality, I represent this truth. I can't play. I'm standing against strong forces. So I have to be strong. I have to be boastful. But I am humble. I'm not an arrogant person. Because, like I've said many times, I can accept error. Because I understand that the creation talks to all of us. From the eldest to the smallest. Wisdom can come from any type of source, even from the devil, the wicked themselves. If you shut up and listen, I'm listening to you. I'm hearing what you say. And I understand. But some of you love falsehood. Some of you, some of you like this world. I don't like nothing about America. I don't like nothing about how anything on this planet. I don't like it's just all of it is messed up. I don't if God told me to leave this place and don't look back. No problem. But y'all, there's something about this that you want, that you love. Because really, you don't believe in heaven. Really, you don't believe those scriptures. Because your reality is right here. What you see. What you touch. You say that you believe those things. But you really, you don't. Because if you did, you would not be embracing and loving the enemies of God. Those who involve themselves in unrighteous behaviors. Proven liars and deceivers. I want to talk about. Speaking of liars and deceivers, I want to talk about these persons who have the nerve, a lot of nerve, because they are ignorant, really. And I guess they think that we are ignorant, and they are correct, because if the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves, in America, if we were not ignorant, if if our minds were not dead, if we were not walking zombies, they could not do what they have done to us. But because we have been made deaf, dumb, and blind, they know that we're ignorant. But real truth is here. And truth has been given to us through the ages via Malcolm X, via Martin Luther King, via Noble Drew Ali, via Marcus Garvey, Nat Turner, truths have been given to us, and those truths 
have reached the plateau, now you will see or you will be blind forever. Because you can't get no, you can't get no better than your accepting your reality. So they tell us and think we're dumb. Dumb enough to believe a liar and a deceiver telling us we are not victims. <laughs> That's a ludicrous claim. They have to be ignorant. That's a bold statement to tell a people who have gone through what we have that we are not victims. But there are those who have suffered less and they are victims. Let me explain something to you, brothers and sisters. Don't let nobody tell you that the descendants of slaves born in America, I don't care if you Oprah or Bill Cosby, Jesse Jackson, I don't give a care if you're a billionaire or you're on welfare, don't let none of these suckers tell you that you're not a victim. And when they do come to you with that foolishness, Either you tell them to come to this house, play this video for them, or you remember what I said to you within the this the time frame of this video, and you fire that back at them and watch the watch them run. Get behind you, get behind me, Satan. Because that's all it is. It's Satan coming to you. See, there are those who, like I said before, there are those who benefit from things just the way they are. And the way things are is that you have a certain group of people in a superior position, and then you have those in an inferior position. And we, who are the descendants, descendants of slaves in America, we have always been in the lower echelon of things. We don't make any laws. We don't make any policies. We're just here. Whatever those on the top want us to do, there we go. And they pat us on our head. Good Negro. There's no equality in that. Your vote don't mean nothing when those people in power outnumber you. You don't have a chance in hell. So what? So when black folks vote, Basically, it's an illusion giving you a facade, fantasy, making you believe that you're a part of some type of process. Your vote means something when really it don't. Actually, when people vote, period, your vote don't mean anything because the president of the United States is chosen by the electoral college and they can vote with the people or they can vote however they please. Because the Electoral College was established when the majority of America was illiterate. And those who were in power felt as though they were too stupid to vote for a proper leader. Which I guess they still feel today. Even though you have a college degree. Even though you read and write real well. And some of y'all doing very well. Y'all brag about it all the time. But yet and still, you are not well enough where they trust you with choosing a president. So they just give you the illusion. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. And there you go. Voting for nothing. Your vote don't mean anything. And that's a reality. You don't want to accept that either. See, that's the, your problem. Y'all live in fat, fantasy, la-la land. Mickey Mouse, Barnum and Bailey world, circus stuff. And you wonder why you are in the condition that you're in. So you have these idiots that tell us that we are not victims. And they tell us that because they don't want to make accept responsibility and make proper choices for themselves. 
just the very fact that Africans were born in America give you the first clue that victimization was going on. The, the very fact that you, our ancestors, we were placed here involuntarily tell you somebody was victimized. That you were part of the commission of a crime. A crime against humanity. Now to prove my points, I use as an example the law of the Caucasian people of this country. I'm going to use the law of the perpetrators of the crime themselves to make my point to show you that the black man and woman of America was victims then and you still a victim right now. First of all, exactly what is a victim? Let's make it simple. A victim is one who has suffered great harm, whether it could be mental or physical injury, due to the due to the commission of a crime or negligence on the part of another person. Please keep in mind that in many cases, the victim, him or herself, have suffered great injury but they may have also become deceased a de a victim don't necessarily have to be alive so in their place a relative can represent them or any other proper representative may pursue may pursue justice for that victim as you know there are many people who are murdered. There are many people who die in car accidents. They are deceased. But their family or a lawyer, somebody can represent those who have passed this life. So just because you are deceased don't mean that you can't be a victim. So, and that person that represents you can pursue justice, which will, uh, the consequence or the result, if you pursue the charges, criminal charges, the one who caused that person's death or that harm, they could go to jail, be given the death penalty, or in a civil court, you can win money, and that money will be granted to the relatives. Look, look. The money can be granted to the relatives of the deceased. That money goes to their estate, which means it will go to that person's relatives, wife, children, whoever inherits that the deceased person's estate. Or the money, the reward, the award that is won in the court, that becomes part, that is the, the estate. Most times in court, the victim is known as the plaintiff. Now, y'all want y'all to, I don't want to try to bore you. I want to try to make this point. And keep these points in mind so when you, so when these wackos come to you with this foolishness, oh, black folks, they ain't no victim, then you can tell them to get the hell out of your face. In court, the victim is known as the plaintiff. The plaintiff is the one who filed a complaint bringing an allegation directed towards the defendant. The defendant is the person accused of committing the crime or other offense. I am a plaintiff. I accuse the white man of atrocities against black people 400 years ago, and I accuse them of doing the same things in a different manner right now, today. So I would be the plaintiff and the United States of America would be the defendant. For one to become a victim doesn't always mean that you can see your injury. Look, listen now. 
just because you can't see the injury doesn't mean that you're not injured. For example, a child that is very young and their mother was murdered, they are a victim. But the child does not know, it's too young to know that they are a victim. So the child continues to behave like a normal child because they can't comprehend, they don't know what's going on. That's your problem, brothers and sisters. You don't know that you're a victim. You can't comprehend, you just don't know. A person that is dying from the side effect of some drug can go years and years and years and don't know. Look like everybody else. Look healthy and everything. You don't know that you're injured. In the case of those of us who are born uh, the descendants of slaves in America, It is very ignorant and silly on our part to listen to a nation of people whose ancestors and they themselves, even today, you can see cases of crimes against humanity. Why would you listen to these people who are enslavers, who sit around, drop bombs, as I speak, they are planning on dropping bombs on Iran. They're always planning murder, exploiting, doing something to somebody. But this is the land that's supposed to be so peaceful. If it's so peaceful, how come you act so savage, so brutal, and you go, you go broke trying to kill people? Every bomb they dropped on Libya. Every bomb cost a half a million dollars. Oh, woo! Mm -mm -mm. Do you really believe that these people, or have you ever heard of anybody being honest when they are being sued? When there are there are thousands or millions of dollars at stake. See, that's the problem here. See, y'all don't know what's at stake here. You really, cause see, you don't know your past. You really don't know what's going on. You are naive like the little young child. You don't know that your mother was murdered. So you just acting like nothing happened. And then here you are, you are an adult. You're grown, but you have a childish mentality. That's why you get so angry, you act, you pop and everything like a child. Do you really believe that these people would tell you to stand for yours and that you are a victim when they know that if you really pursued it, that you would win? And you, yo, the monies that all these black folks would win in courts over reparations, the 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 financial balance would be it would be it would it would give us a big favor because all that of the money would fall in our hands. They don't want you with nothing. They don't want you to have economic power because some of us are stupid we would win money just like we do in the lottery run around and get the money right back to white folks but they know that those of us who are pursuing reparations they know we plan on building our neighborhoods building ourselves looking for lands and friends elsewhere they don't want you to be like that they these people are slick and you fall for it because you don't know no better. So they want you to be satisfied 
with the little crumbs that we get as a people and be satisfied in the in the trough that they cause us to be in when we can be better and we are all better because we are and have been the victims we are victims ourselves and our relatives for 400 years have been victims they want you to they don't want you to see this because they are slick they are deceivers there's a reason why the people of this land are called devils not only by black Muslims but they are called Satan all over the earth because that's what they are deceivers they don't want you to have what you earn due to your suffering the courts are used because in this society people not only black folks but all the people in this country they refuse to make proper choices and accept responsibility for the things that they do. When they when they know, many of these people know they wrong. Large corporations and wealthy individuals, they go to court and tie the litigation up for years and years and years, hoping that somebody who is poor, they can't hang. So, maybe your case is dismissed or you will settle because you can't handle the long fight. You'll settle for less than what your case is worth or they will deny you access to the court system, period. There are many black people in this nation who have done great research. They are ready to go to court and fight for reparations, but these folks won't let you do that because you will win they don't want you to have nothing because if these people go to court and win this money, I will tell you, even the so-called Uncle Tom, the Sambo, they will go to court. See, they talk all that garbage, but the Sambo and the Uncle Toms, the dark Europeans, they will go to court, do the research, go to court, and try to get some money for their family too. They so fake. <laughs> I don't even like talking about Sambos and dark European because they are really fake. But see, those who are in power, they know that if you let one Negro come to court and win reparations, everybody else gonna start trying to do it. They're not stupid. In a society like this, where an entire nation is guilty of the victimization of an entire people where it became wealthy this nation became wealthy and powerful due to due to the commission of a crime a crime against humanity do you truly believe that these people and their children who inherited stolen goods do you think they would tell you and they they stole you and they stole your labor exploited you for 400 years. Do you really think that they're going to tell you that you, you, you are, are a victim? Of course not. That's common sense. The so-called Negro or black American, the dark European, they will laugh while they, while they put their arms around their best white friend. And they would take their gun and point it at you and me and would tell you, look, I ain't no victim. They'll tell you all about their white friends, their education, their money, and their other material wealth. They'll tell you, this is a medical. All you have to do is work hard and you can have success. Success is always material things. Success is always being under the control of Caucasian people. Again, remember what I said. Being a victim doesn't always mean that an injury can be easily seen or noticed. Sometimes 
you can become injured and don't even know it. For example, there was a lady who walked into a store and she had a knife in the back of her skull. She had no idea that a knife now, can you imagine this? She had a knife in the back of her skull. The doctor said when they removed it, if that knife had went in just a little bit deeper, it would have severed her spine. She had no idea. These sambos, these so-called Uncatans, these coons, these dark Europeans, they have no idea they are victims at all. Walking around with a knife in the back of their head. Close to their spine. They have no idea. Brothers and sisters. Your victimization. Began. As soon as our ancestors feet. Were placed on the soil of this country. Even after so-called freedom, the ex-slaves continued to suffer. During slavery, the slave was denied religion as well as the right to be educated. What did one that had no soul? We had no soul. So since the white man said we don't have any souls, what do we need religion for? So we were denied religion. And since the only thing we're going to do is Man, your labor, what do you need an education for to lift that bale? Pick that cotton. There's no need for no education. This was a crime against humanity. This crime in America was made a way of life. Do you understand? Can y'all comprehend? This was a way of life. It was made legal. And speaking of religion, the church, y'all Christian folks, <laughs> the church approved of it. These men, women, and children for hundreds of years, not for 30 years, 30 days, 30 months, they lived this life for 300 years. Oh wow. Man. You don't feel nothing for them do you? No you don't. Because you don't think that you're a victim. And so since you're not a victim. You can't. You can't. What's the word I'm looking for? You can't sympathize with your own relatives. 400 years ago. You, can, you don't even feel nothing for yourself. In, in today's society. The black man and woman, the ex-Africans, turned into beasts of burden, just like a cow, treated like a chicken or a hog. When the perpetrators decided to give the slave religion, the religion that was given to slaves was designed to occupy the slave's mind so that the slave can have God, but was content with being a slave. Uh, still happening today. You don't understand that you're a victim and you are content being under the rule of a people who are unrighteous. Oh, wow. The slave suffered. During this period of time, great humiliation, beatings, rapes, castrations, torn featherings, as well as many other horrors they, they don't even talk about that you, you and I don't even really know. They watered down the history so we can't cry for ourselves because if you really knew our history, brothers and sisters, now you cry like a baby and you couldn't stop crying. Now, after an internal war between the North and the South, these brothers, they went to war with one another. And the result was so-called freedom 
for our people. The war, the civil war, was fought to preserve the union. It had nothing to do with fighting to end slavery. The slavery issue came because the North used it to gain support for themselves. That's the reason why. Abraham Lincoln made it quite clear. If it was possible to keep slavery and preserve the Union, he would have done it. But they continue to tell this lie that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves and all this other kind of madness. Actually, I heard that they do teach that in college the truth of the matter but in general society Abraham Lincoln freed the slave good old honest Abe there was nothing honest about honest Abe he was the leader of a nation that practiced slavery a crime against humanity don't you consider your ancestors human beings Don't you believe that they should have some type of justice? Aren't you their relative? Oh, you have been tricked. You have been deceived. You have been injured with a knife in the back of your skull and you don't even know it. You're a victim and don't even know it. Smiling, skinning, and grinning. Blood running all by down your neck. Don't even know there's a knife in your back. So when the slaves were so-called free and we must remember if a man can give you freedom and you did not obtain that freedom yourself the same people that gave you freedom can take your freedom away from you and they can control your freedom and you and I we are a controlled people under somebody else's law that we didn't have nothing to do with the law is not diverse the policy is not di diverse you are not diverse we were turned into from slaves to dark-skinned versions of them that's why we can easily say God bless America, land that I love. How can you love a land that castrated your fathers, raped your grandmothers, and did so much evil? They committed crimes against humanity and have not been punished. How can you love a criminal? Oh, wow. Woo! They don't want you to hear the truth. They don't want your minds open. So the slave was given this pitiful freedom. And the slave was given nothing. The slave was not rehabilitated. The slave was not given land. The slave was not given the proper resources for a people who only knew manual labor. You was out there to do to try to make it survive the best way that you could. So without rehabilitation, you began to, to suffer even more. The slave was not rehabilitated, only physically free to suffer more abuse minus the chains. In fact, many will return to the chains because many of our brothers and sisters, especially the black man, they were many black males false charges was brought against them and they were placed in these work prisons forced to work for free on the railroad and these mines brothers disappeared never to be seen again in 2012 now listen to this now that was right after after so-called freedom right now it is reported that out of that out of all the missing persons in america 
the majority of missing persons in America are black. But we are not victims. Why are we disappearing? How come we are missing? Just like those brothers was missing, put into these prisons, disappearing. What is happening to us? Why are we missing? I'm trying to give us, I want you to think. Break out of this fantasy that you live in. You are a victim. Brothers and sisters, we are victims. We were victims then and we're still victims. And you don't know it. You can't see your injury. But somebody else can see the blood coming from the back of your neck. You have a knife in your skull. When you go to court, you're asking for relief. The intent is, is not to make you an instant millionaire. The intent when you go to court is to make you whole again. Regain only the value of what you lost. For an example, if you broke my CD and it was only worth $3, I can only expect to get $3, not a brand new $20 disc. What makes you a victim is that someone has injured you where you are no longer a whole person. <laughs> of course, the ignorant will quickly tell you, dude, man, you crazy than ever. You, you, act, you acting like a bat out of hell. I, I Look, I ain't no dang victim. The descendants of slaves born in America. You are not whole. We are the victims of theft. We are the victims of a crime against humanity. And the United States of America, the United Snakes of America has never paid for what it has done to us. In fact, they are arrogant because they believe they have gotten away with a crime. A crime against humanity again. Are you human? Did this happen to us? Was somebody punished? No, it wasn't. You are a victim. We are victims. Our ancestors was brought here against their will. During that time, they were robbed of the knowledge of self. Denied religion, denied education, terrorized, humiliated, raped, lynched, and suffered untold horrors. Things we don't even know nothing about. After being physically freed, the masses was given no type of lands or other resources. Still lynched, still castrated, still raped, discriminated against. Our ancestors as well as ourselves have not been rehabilitated not to show how to develop business create our laws and finance not directed toward the lost information about our ancestors we were encouraged to become a black version of them so if we are not rehabilitated and return back to our African self, then we are not made whole. You can go to court when somebody have injured you so that you can regain what you lost so that you can be made whole. You speak not one word of any African language. In fact, you are ashamed to be black. You are ashamed to be African, to have anything to do with Africans because they have painted Africans and black as something nasty and filthy. Nothing to be proud of. You continue to name your children after the white man and you know that the name that you have and the name you've given your children was names from the slave master. But you still do it with pride. And you think
think that you're not injured? That's just like a woman who is raped and she have a child. She named that child after the rapist. You are a victim. You are a victim of a crime against humanity. You are a porn fiend, sex addict, pedophile, a drunk. You like beer, drugs, and other intoxicants. You homosexual, all these different behaviors. They come from being a victim in this society. As an African, there is no evidence to suggest that you was a drunk, that you was a prostitute and a pimp and a gang member, all this other stuff that we are. It all came from being a victim in this society. It did not come from Africa. So if the white man don't like black folks, they need to get mad at themselves, get mad at their ancestors, because you made us what we are. We are Frankenstein's monster. None of the none of this of what we are came from Africa. It all came. Our only teacher, our only example is Caucasian people. And what kind of example have you been? A warmonger, a drunk, a pedophile, all these things I just mentioned. Sex fiend. Dog going to sleep with dogs and all kinds of nasty behaviors. Learn it all from these people here. You are a victim. You are dependent upon the white man for your food, your clothes, for jobs, for your education, everything. You don't know how to do nothing for yourself. And in fact, you are filled with self-hatred. You don't love other black folks. Your loyalty is to those who put you in the condition that you're in and made us Frankenstein's monster. And you don't think that you're not sick. You don't think that you're not a victim. Oh, Lord. Woo! In religion, they would say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gang member. The Crips and the Bloods. You learn that from watching gangster movies and what white folks did, the mafia and all like that. There was no gangs and all like that. We didn't learn that from no Africans. Gender confused. We sitting around here and some of y'all brag about sucking vagina, sucking penises, and you got dogs and cats living all in your house. You learn all that from them living in this society. Messing around with these animals. And you love white Jesus. You love Jesus. Ain't nowhere in Africa they taught you about no Jesus. But you love Jesus more than white folks do. And you got the nerve to even try to tell the white man that he wrong about how he teach about Jesus. You can't see that you are a victim. He's the one that gave Jesus and the Bible all that stuff to you. I could go on and on and on because we are we have become nothing but black skin versions of Europeans. Because we have never been rehabilitated, we've never been made whole. And we are the victims of a crime. Denied justice. If you were whole, if you ever become whole, then you'll be proud to return back to the lands of your ancestors. You would want to try to seek Africa, but instead you are a proud dark European, a version of your oppressor. And just like the slaves of the past, Except now, some of y'all make million, millions of dollars. Y'all got white girlfriends and husbands and wives. and Oh boy, we moving on up 
to the east side. Oh, we finally got a piece of the pie, don't you? You only got crumbs. You don't know what a or you don't know what a pie looks like. The only thing you we've had is the crumbs. And then they use they use the ones who got a little against the ones who don't have nothing. To keep us all messed up so you don't realize that you're a victim, that you've been bamboozled, that you've been tricked, that you've been deceived. And we go for it because you're a victim and you don't even know it. You can't see, you can't see yourself, but I'm here to bring you your reality and I'm going to show you that you're sick. I'm going to show you that you're a victim. You think things have gotten better for you because you can play Nintendo. You can smoke some weed. It has gotten even so bad. Malcolm X talked about the Haas Negro and the Field Negro. But it has gotten so bad for us that even the Field Negro, because he can smoke some weed, because he can play Nintendo, because he can put rims on his car, he don't understand. He's content being in the field now. Things will get better one day. You don't understand that you are a victim. You are a victim due to a crime against humanity. We have been made inhuman. And they let us know all the time when they shoot us down in the streets and there is no justice. Been doing it for 400 years. You don't really expect the racist Caucasian people of this nation to tell you that you are a victim when if they were a just people, if they were a righteous people, if they was good as you claim, then they would allow you access to the courts so that uh, you may attempt to make yourself whole and and get justice for our ancestors who were treated like hell for over 300 some years. And I want to say this in my conclusion. I want you to listen to me now. All right, listen to me. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. In, I'm bringing it on in. I'm reeling it on in. Okay. I hope I got some. Hope I'm catching some fish tonight. Under the law of this nation, you can sue for your own injury as well as a relative living or dead. This even goes a little bit further. Under criminal law, now listen, you got your thinking caps on, I want y'all to check this out. I'm using the white man's law. See, the white man, these racist Caucasian people, this is their law. But they won't let you have access to the law because they are lawless. This is a, an illusion of justice, an illusion of righteousness. For them, but for you, they don't want to give you nothing. But under their criminal law, check this out. You as a relative... You can seek justice for your people, living or dead, or if they are incapacitated, they cannot function on their own. Under criminal law, there is no statute of limitations for murder. So the government itself should be brought up on crimes against humanity. And since a convicted felon cannot profit from their crime. Any profit this nation has gotten from a crime against humanity, it goes to the victim. Y'all don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're losing. This is under their law. This is why they don't want you to view yourself as a victim because if you really push for it, the wealth of this nation would flip-flop. These, their their businesses will become your businesses. 
their landmarks will become your landmarks. Everything that they got will become yours. You will become the head Negro in charge. Woo! Man, if y'all will wake up and use their law, use their laws against them or expose them for the deceivers that they are. These people mean you no good. Keep believing them if you won't. And after this happens, all that stuff they, they call you inferior. Make mockery of you for make mockery of us for generations. All that stuff will stop. Because you can still call me Negro. Well, not Negro, you know the N-word. You can still call me a monkey and an ape, but I got everything you used to have is mine now. How you like that? And you work for me now. Now I will control things in here now. Because for over 400 years, you ran things. And you became rich and wealthy off my ancestors back. And you exploited and discriminated and hurt us for all these years. Now it's time for you to get a dose of your own medicine. But I want to say this in my conclusion. If something like that did happen, brothers and sisters, whether it happens that way, which I really doubt, but I'm telling you that you are a victim. We truly do not want to be like them. We don't want to be like our oppressors. When, where they were just, unjust, we want to be just. Where they was unfair, we want to be fair. Where they was unequal, we want to be equal. And we can change the world if we change ourselves. But just think about what I said. There is no statue of limitations for murder. How many of our people did this nation murder? This nation should be brought up for charges of crimes against humanity. Not only back then, but they are still committing crimes against humanity right now. When will the United States be punished for the evil that they do? So it's going to take a God to come and deal with these people. And the reason why I exist and the reason why we are awakening is because God in religion, the way they talk about it, a, a new knowledge and awakening has come. And that God is you and me. It is all of us who seek that which is right. It is time for right to enter the world. And it's time for wrong to get the hell out of Dodge. These people are fake righteous folks. They don't want right. Only as long as it keeps them where they are at, they don't mind. But if it takes them out of their comfort zone, makes it so they can't control nothing, they don't like it. It's time to take them out of power. It's time for their world to go down. Because their world ain't right. And now it's time for right. And for all you Christians out there, you should be on the bandwagon to get rid of that which is not right. But just like the Christians that supported slavery, you are like them. And, and your Jesus, according to the scriptures, upon the return of Jesus, Jesus is to return and clean up his own house. And y'all Christians going to be the first ones to get dealt with. So I would, I would not want to believe that if I was you because you are on the wrong side of the law. And it ain't the white man's law. It's the law of God. It's the law of justice. And that's what time it is right now. It ain't about hatred. It ain't about disliking somebody. It's about right and wrong. Either you are right or you are wrong. These people are wrong. They are. This nation is this nation is guilty of crimes against humanity. We are the number one victims. How can you love a criminal? But then you sit around here and judge all the little, little criminals going in and out of jail. But you love and will fight and die 
for the ultimate criminal, the ultimate devil. You should be ashamed of yourself. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to bring that to you. You are victims. We are victims. Whether you know it or not, some of you realize that you are victims now. Some of these people, like I say, they don't know, don't care. They don't know that they are victims. So you let them keep sliding on and doing what they do. But for those of us who are awakened, those of us who will embrace the truth, let us continue to spread that truth and awaken the masses of the people. And hopefully humanity will get rid of itself of this parasite, this virus that it has been a thorn in the side of humanity for generations. Peace forever and always respect you. And until next time, thank you for listening. I am Angus Snub Nub Seven. Y'all have a good night or day or morning. <laughs>
that we should forget the past. Forget the past and move on. Those who don't know the past are doomed to repeat it. How can we forget the past when we don't know the past? Who said that we know the past? We were stripped of the knowledge of self. The black man and woman in America, we were our ancestors. We as a people, we were robbed of the knowledge of self. We no longer worship our God, practice our religion. We speak, we don't speak our language. We don't know what kind of foods our ancestors ate. We don't know their culture. We don't know anything about our past. The only thing we know about is this history of the struggle of a slave in America. And we really don't know that because it's been watered down to make you believe that you went through all this and now everything is all right. But reality always kick you in the butt. And you have a case like Trayvon. And you have other brothers and sisters shot down in the street like dogs. To show you that you have not made it. That things are still the same. It's just the way that the game is played has changed. But you don't know that because you don't know your past. So, these people want you, brothers and sisters, and myself, forget the past and move on. But yet it's still, a wise white man told his people, those who don't know the past are doomed to repeat it. Why do you believe they want you to forget the past. First of all, you don't know the past. But if you ever do, they want you to move on. Why is that? Do you know why? Because they want you to move on. Because there is something there they don't want you to see. You ever notice? That's how, that's the, uh, that's the strategy of the high pressure salesperson. Many of you have been through this. I know I have. Somebody trying to sell you something. And then they trying to rush you. Sign the contract. Don't read the fine print. People want you to move on. Just let's sign it. We got a deal going. Sign it. They don't want you to take your time, read the contract, and understand what you are involved in. Why is this? Because they are trying to deceive you. They are trying to trick you. They are hiding something. And if you knew your past, you really don't. What you know of is a slave history in America, and it's watered down. You really don't know black slavery in America, you really don't know. And you really don't know anything prior to the enslavement of our ancestors. You really don't know. They want us to forget the past. First of all, they know we don't know the past. Because brothers and sisters, if you really knew the past, if you really read the fine print in the contract, if you really understood what you was involved in, it'll get you angry as hell. So, I understand brothers and sisters who are angry and mad because when you really understand what has happened to us as a people in this nation, oh, ooh, every Caucasian person that you see, oh man, I know because I used to feel that way. Because I didn't know. They watered down the history. They have lied to us. Deceived us. They have not told us. The reality. Of what we've been through. So they don't want you to recognize. What you've been through. Forget the past. You got a Cadillac. 
You got a white woman. You got a white man on your arm. You smoke weed. You call each other nigga and you smile. See, you call yourself nigga. Everything is all right now. Happy, happy, joy, joy. And you don't even attempt to read the fine print. These are deceivers. These are tricksters. They would tell themselves, don't forget the past, and they don't. Every time you turn around, they're talking about 9-11. Every time you turn around, they're talking about the Holocaust. Every time you talk, turn around, what George Washington did, who forget the past, move on. But they don't move on. But they want you to move on because they know we have been made a fool out of. And guess what? Who's still running who? With all your privileges, with all your Oprahs, with all your Bill Cosby's, all your Michael Jordan's, all, all your little Wayne's. Who still run who? They still run you. You are still, you are still, and we are still in a slave position. There is no equality. There is no diversity. It is still separate. The white community, black community, Asian community, Haitian community, everybody is, is still separate and it is unequal. But because you don't understand your past, you don't understand your reality. And many of you don't want to know the real truth. Many of you don't want to know your past. Because, if, because when you begin to learn your past, the reality of that truth of knowing your past destroys the illusion of your lifestyle, your fake lifestyle that you live in today. It's fake. You are fake. You are nothing but a dark-skinned white man. And some of y'all holler black power, black power family, and you nothing but a white man in the mind. Because if you understand your past, you act just like the oppressor. Your view of success is the way that the white man views success. You are exactly the same. But since you really don't understand the past, you don't understand what has happened to you, you are doomed to repeat what has happened to us. Mm -mm -mm. Tricksters and deceivers. You must learn your past. Understand what has happened to you. Because somebody is trying to hide something from you. And you are doing yourself a disservice. And your children, your children have the right to know what happened to them. And stop telling our babies this lie like everything is all right. I am very sure that our little brother Trayvon Martin thought everything was all right. Till he was shot down like a dog on the streets of Sanford, Florida. Because everything ain't all right. He may and he may not get justice in this case. We don't know. Because these people are slick. They'll do a little something, something just to pacify you. Calm you down. And then slink their way out of it later on down the line. These people are not slick. They do the same thing over and over again. And because we don't know the past, we fall for it. So don't fall for it. Open up your eyes. Learn your history. Know the past. And you don't move. Move on. If you do move on, you move on in a manner that's beneficial to you and not them. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Talib Ibn Ra. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth.